This is the UI, so this is going to be a detailed walkthrough of the entire UI showing you all of the functions that are available. I will include some demos of what I feel is appropriate just to keep the video to a manageable length. So then, starting in the top left hand corner here, we've got the flash. So we've got flash auto. And I can be switch on permanently. Or you can switch off altogether. Or you can have the actual flashlight with the phone on in the background, which you take the photo, which allows for more light in the area. So we'll just leave that on auto for now. Then we've got a timer, two, five or 10 second delay. Great for portraits so or getting loads of people in one photo. We've then got the depth effect, so we can use that right here. So we've got this subject here, so if we just blur, so it kind of gives a, a very bokeh-ish background. If I just prefer to use the natural bokeh of the lens because I think it works a lot better than using this depth effect. It's a little bit superfluous, I think, but something there if you want to use it. So then we've got the aspect ratio control, so you can have one by one, which is great for social media posts. We've then got four by three, which is the standard mode out of the box. We've then got 16 by nine, which is slightly wider field of view. And then we've got 18 by nine, which is the native aspect ratio of the screen. So we'll just put that back to four by three for now. They've got control over HDR. So you've got HDR off, which we are now. HDR always on or HDR auto. I would recommend using HDR Auto at all times because that uses the Snapdragon chip to achieve the best image quality. And we'll delve into the settings in a moment, which are down in the bottom left hand corner here. We've then got control over the selfie or main camera. Hi. And we've then got the shutter button. Record for video, we'll push that right now. And we've got Google Lens down in the bottom right hand corner. So. This is a little bit hit and miss, but we'll see if it recognizes something. So all we do is we point, you can see those little search dots on the screen. So if we tap this, and it tells us what it thinks it is, which is quite a cool feature. Not something I use all the time, but it's nice to have it. And it's nice to have it integrated into the actual UI as well, which is cool. So if we go into the actual camera settings, so we can see the camera resolution is set to 12 megapixels at four by three by default, but you've then got a selection of options underneath, including nine megapixels, nine megapixels at one by one, eight megapixels, 18 by nine, eight megapixel, four by three, six megapixels, 16 by nine, six megapixels, one by one, and five megapixels at 18 by nine. They've got a timestamp that speaks for itself. We've got Asus watermark, so that leaves a watermark in the bottom of the photos. They've got the touch shutter, which means you can touch the screen rather than use the software shutter key. And then we've got smart autofocus. We can change that to continuous auto, or we can change it to infinity. So that basically keeps the entire image in focus. They've got a video quality menu. So you've got 4K, 18 by nine at 2160, full HD, 1920 by 1080. They've got Full HD 1920 by 1080 60 frames per second, Full HD 120 frames per second. Again, that's a huge surprise for a phone at this price point. Good old HD at 720p, 720p 120 frames per second. And finally, finishing off with TV quality, 640 by 480. I haven't seen that since the old Nokia N95 days. Further on down the menu, we've got the grid, so we can change that to off, three by three, with these two further options at the bottom there. We can switch off the camera sounds, location services, so that tags your location, very helpful for Google Photos. We've got an anti-flicker mode, which you can change to 60 hertz. You can set the volume key as a shutter, or you can use it for zoom. And we've got instant camera, which means you can double click the volume key to launch the camera. Strange how they didn't use the power button, but never mind, it works. And then we can restart everything to its default settings. Now then, further on the right hand side of the screen. So this level, just behind the software shutter key, you see there's a, a series of dots there. So if we just move to the top there. So this gives us a number of modes, which adds some filters to the image so we can see hipster faded blush warm none vibrant grayscale retro and nostalgic i've actually taken a selection of images in these modes so you can see them yourselves it's actually just the same scene 
in a different in these different scene modes and it just gives you an idea of how they all look and then if we go down we then got further options so we've got beauty so this basically smooths out your skin I personally don't like it however it's cool if you want to take selfies or if you want to take portraits and you want to have some fun changing the way that people look now this is an interesting one super resolution so what this does if you look in the top left hand corner of the screen it interpolates the image up to 49 megapixels now you can drop that down uh, to a lower ratio uh, that does obviously crop the image slightly as well but just to give you an idea of how this works so if we just go to these plants here uh, we're just going to take an image in super resolution now what i'll do is at the end of the video i will include this image which is processing and i'll go into auto mode and i will take the same image and you can see for yourself whether you think the super resolution is worth it. So then we've got panorama. So we're going to do one of those right now. So this is cool. The OnePlus 6 uses, you have to use the phone vertically, whereas with this, you can just use it in this native ratio here. So it just goes left to right using the phone horizontally. Much, much easier. Now we're just going to keep our thing, keep our hands nice and steady to take this image. I'll include this in the gallery at the end for you so you can see for yourself and stitching I've actually taken one of these before is very very good it looks ni nice and neat and tidy and I think the overall resulting image looks really really good I will just show you a quick preview now there we go so we've got clouds to the left a nice blue sky in the middle so it's a good contrast we've got slow motion which speaks for itself and then we've got pro mode so pro mode is as you would imagine you can see Got all of these different options on the screen now so you can set your white balance got your EV value got ISO this goes all the way down to 25 which is great for nighttime shots now I have, will include some of those at the end of the video in the gallery we can then change to wide angle in pro mode you do lose the focus in this mode because there is no auto focus just go back to standard Got shutter speed control, auto focus or manual. So this works very, very well. It's great if you want to get a nice steady macro shot. So we'll just show you that now. So if we just move the image you can see there. That is macro and then you can go wider. So you can get a really good lock on your subject rather than relying on the standard autofocus and then you can reset everything to other values as well the good thing is in pro mode you can see here on the screen it takes everything in raw mode so you can take it to your heart's content in your chosen picture editing tools to get the right look for your image so go back to auto mode and we've got this gif animation so basically what i can do is i press and hold the shutter key and keep hold of it by just shutter go and it gives us this little animation on the screen here which is a novelty factor but I'm sure that people will absolutely lap it and you can change the speed at the bottom of the screen here so that's pretty cool okay so we've then got Google Lens which you've just seen and we've also got time lapse as well which is as you would think it is you would need a tripod for that to get the best image however it does work quite well in most situations so that is it that is my UI walkthrough for the Zenfone 5 as promised I'm just going to show you how the autofocus works in standard auto mode very impressive and it does a really really good job and I'm not going to stop saying at this price point because it is a very capable camera and it's underselling it slightly so if we just move away subject we can use it on so we've got one plus six move away got some really good focus locks very quick very very good so we're going to take a photo in the wide angle mode you can see the 
slight change in exposure there as we move towards the sky. However, it's nothing that you can't change in post-processing. We can see just in the top left-hand corner, if I move towards the sky again, you'll see a little cloud. There we go. And that shows that the AI is working on the camera. So AI is employed throughout the entire camera UI. You cannot switch it off, but it does a pretty good job. I think it's more sympathetic than on the Huawei P20 and P20 Pro, which can tend to be a little bit over aggressive. And finally, one last thing I want to do, and this is something I do with every phone camera that I try, and that is just to just take an image of anything and see just how well the phone captures a scene. So there we go, we've got some nice cloud and sky in the background. We'll just take a photo of that. I will include that in the gallery. We'll just see how that looks. And again, a great looking photo by any standard. I want us to take the scene at a wide angle. Again, it squeezes much more in the scene. And there we go. Absolutely superb. Really, really great phone. And a great camera to go with it as well. I'm not sure if I mentioned at the start, but the phone uses four axis optical image stabilization for just the standard 12 megapixel camera. But I think it's a great job and a great camera. It's up to you to decide what you think of the photos. I personally think they look absolutely great, especially at this price point. It's very, very capable. It's so easy to use as well. You can just get great photos without really having to try that hard. If you want to use the Pro Mode to get even more better looking shots, you can do. But I think in Auto Mode, I think the phone does a great job. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave it a like. And also, please consider subscribing if it's your first time here so you don't miss great videos coming soon, including more camera tests as and when I get new devices. So please let me know your thoughts in the comments, good or bad. It's all feedback for future videos. But I do hope you've enjoyed this style of camera test. If there's anything you think I can do better, or if there's something you really like, then please let me know, and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. But for now, my name is Mr. West. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.